Hey golfers, Drew Mahol back here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter at Second Swing. And today we're going to talk a little bit about wedges. Um, one of the cool things about Second Swing is that we specialize in selling used equipment. Um, and with wedges, obviously, um, sometimes the grooves can be a little bit worn on those. So we wanted to educate everybody on some of the impacts of having used grooves on your wedges, the ones you have now, or where you're purchasing wedges for yourself as well. So Thomas, I know that you know wedge shots can be full shots. They can be pitch shots, bunker shots, uh, but I know the grooves are going to impact all three of those types of shots. So just from the broader perspective here, what are the main differences you'd see between used grooves and new grooves on wedges? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things is, you know, how often should I replace those wedges? You know, a lot of people may ask, you know, you know, uh, do my wedges look like they're worn? Every wedge is different. Your high aloft of wedges are your wedges that are probably the ones that are going to maybe wear out the fastest. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones you're going to hit more often out of the sand. Sand is a major contributor to wear. Yeah. And, and the bunkers, you've got rocks, you've got sand, you've got little pebbles. Mm -hmm. So that's always going to cause the club to wear out a, little, a lot more. So high aloft of wedges will definitely wear out faster. Those are the ones you're going to definitely re replace a little bit more. Yep. Yeah. And I know, you know, obviously tour players are playing every day, and I know you have a little bit of an estimate on how often they replace their wedges, but essentially replacing your wedges comes down to how much you play. And I know, what would you say are the estimates probably of some of them on tour to replace, you know, a lob wedge and then kind of all the way down like a pitching wedge or a gap wedge? Yeah, so your better players, for example, Adam Scott, he plays in four majors a year. He replaces his wedges four times a year. Okay. They're the most high-performing you know, events that he wants to make sure his wedges do what they're going to do. So he relies on, on those fresh groups. You know, I talk about, you know, maybe replacing those higher lofted wedges a little bit more often than those lower lofted. You know, there's probably a good formula out there for those players that play a lot of golf. I would recommend your pitching wedge, maybe replace that once per year. Uh, your gap wedge, twice per year. Okay. Sand wedge, three times per year lob wedge four times year per year. Now that's, you know, probably based on playing a lot of golf. You know, I, a lot of people will say, well, I don't need to replace my lob wedge four times per year. Titleist has come out with a, you know, a theory that about every 75 rounds, you should maybe consider replacing your wedges. Uh, at least, you know, maybe assess them. Um, 75 rounds, you know, it sounds like a lot of rounds, but if you're a range rat, if you're hitting a lot of shots, practicing bunker shots, sure. just hit a lot of wedge shots, you know, that adds up pretty quickly, so that doesn't even take into consideration your, your practice time. So it's really important to think about. Obviously, you don't play a lot of golf. You probably don't have to replace your wedges very often. If you play a lot of golf and you expect a lot of performance out of your wedges, you probably want to re consider replacing them a little bit more. Yeah, and it sounds like that formula that you introduced there is kind of correlates to how often you use those clubs typically, right? Most golfers will use their highest lofted wedges around the green most often for those you know, times they maybe miss the green regulation. Yep. Whereas a pitching wedge or a gap wedge are largely used on full swings, sometimes maybe a bump and run scenario here and there. But for the most part, your highest lofted wedges need to be replaced at a highest priority, right? Correct. Um, one other great idea would be maybe your last, say, lob wedge or sand wedge that you replaced, keep it as a practice wedge. You know, that way you don't need to worry about you know, having to replace, you know, every single time. That way you know you've got one for the, uh, you know, on the range, and then when you play on the golf course, put that one in the, on the, you know, the same specs, exactly mm -hmm. the same thing. Um, that way you know it's going to perform well on the course. Sure. So that's, that's what I do. That's what I've started doing in the last couple of years, so I don't have to cycle through as many wedges. Right. And now we'll kind of go through, you know, some of the different shot types and maybe things that you'd see in, you know, used grooves versus new grooves. But we'll start with kind of the pitch shots or shots around the green from the rough, maybe out of the bunker with like a higher lofted wedge. If I'm using the same wedge for two to three years and I play a lot of golf, what type of advantage am I missing out on if I were to upgrade my wedge and get some new grooves? Yeah, I mean, spin. Spin, um, spin affects that rollout on the green. So mm -hmm. with a new wedge, there's a good chance you may be able to check it up and stop it a little bit faster. Um, with an old wedge, you may struggle. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is that may be the way you play your golf. So if you, for example, repla replace that old wedge and you're used to releasing that ball up onto mm -hmm. the hole, now all of a sudden that thing is checking up and coming short, that's something to also could get adjusted sure. to as well. Um, so Titleist also did a robotic test um, where if they hit some, some shots with a wedge that's been played 75 rounds and also been, you know, got fresh grooves, 
the ball spun about 800 RPMs less with the okay. grooves that were new versus the grooves that we used. So that's going to turn into about probably about 10 feet more rolled out with the old grooves versus the new grooves. So you, mm -hmm. you know, end of the day, you want to be closer to the hole. If that thing's going to stop and check up by the hole, you know, this newer grooves are going to work out better. Exactly, and you know, we actually just kind of performed our own little mini test here. Um, you grabbed a couple of. Titleist SM6, 54 degree wedges from the store, yep. one with fresh grooves, one with a pretty used face, um, and we have some numbers to look at here, and just based off of spin, there's a pretty distinct difference. Not quite our 800 RPMs, but about 600 RPM difference between um, the fresh grooves and the used, or the used grooves um, in terms of spin there. Yeah, I was, I was really interested to see actually if that's kind of correlated with this very similar to what, you know, what Titleist has kind of given us. Um, you can see, Spin rate with the fresh grooves was it yeah, was about 600 RPM kind of difference there between the t between the two of them. Now with those grooves that have you know, that that are fresh, notice obviously you generate a lot of spin anyway. Typically, we notice your carry 114 spinning back to a kind of 112.9. So it was 1.4 yards of backspin. Mm -hmm. um, when with the used grooves, you'll notice with a little bit less spin, you'll notice 115.2 carry to 114.7. You know. Spun back half, half a yard. So it was spinning back just a little bit more with the fresh grooves with more spin. So you did happen to get a little bit more checkup. On yep. those shots where you're not maybe swinging quite as hard, on those more finesse shots that ground the green, it's a good chance with newer grooves that ball's going to stop a little faster for you. Yeah, sure. I mean, we look at, I mean, what, 11,500 RPM to just under 11,000 RPM. That's, you know, 600, 550 RPM difference there, just as my quick math. and. That's a, that's a lot of difference really in spin if you think about it in terms of yards to feet. That's probably 10, 15 feet on the green, which could be the difference between a short birdie putt and a lengthier birdie putt um, on, a, you know, on a, uh, an approach shot there. So that's a big difference just you know, on our simple test here. And obviously Titleist has done the research as well. 800 RPM difference. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. So, um, and like you said, it does depend on how you play. Some people do like to roll out their wedge shots and play that kind of bump and run style. Some like to go at the pin and check it up as quick as they can. So again, I think that's all up to the player. Yeah. End of the day, grooves, fresh grooves definitely help to cause that ball to spin more. Um, it just really comes down to, you know, how much you want to spend on your wedges each year. You know, if you want to have fresh grooves all the time, obviously it's going to cost a little, little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're going to use to the way you play, you don't maybe have to replace them as often. You know, I would recommend just like Titleist has kind of come up with. Play about 75 rounds, assess it then. See, you know, maybe see how those grooves are compared to fresher grooves and maybe start considering replacing them at that point. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's you know, the highest priority for your wedge to replace probably is the highest lofted, and then from there, kind of moving down towards your pitch, pitching wedge, correct? Correct, yep, yeah. Start with, you know, your lob wedge, your sand wedge. Those are the ones you use out of the sand. Use the ones you chip with a lot, pitch with a lot around the green. They're probably going to have the most wear. Mm -hmm. And then as you go back, towards your gap wedge and pitching wedge, those ones you're not probably not going to wear quite as much. You don't really play those out of the bunker at all. Um, and so you know, those are not going to wear quite as much. Absolutely. Well, Thomas, thanks for your insight today. Golfers out there, um, when it's time to think about maybe some new wedges or maybe you're inspecting your grooves now and you realize some are worn out, I would encourage you to stop into second swing. Speak with someone like Thomas. Might give you a little bit more insight on the wedges that are fit for your game and also some wedges that could be an upgrade in terms of the more fresh grooves, if you will. Uh, Thomas, thanks again for joining. Your insight is always valuable for us. And I've got to remind all our customers, you know, if you like these videos, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a big thumbs up, comment in the comment section. We love to hear your feedback. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boom. Got it. We'll find a close.